So for side control, you have to pass your opponent's leg and hip defenses and have at least half his back on the ground. So this is the classic side control. Again, three seconds of control will earn you two points. Knee on belly is also considered side control. As a scarf hold. And north south. In addition to reverse scarf hold. Mount position is worth three points. Again, you need three seconds of control. The following constitutes mount. You have to be above your opponent's hips. You can be in the classic mount position. You can grapevine the legs. You can be an S mount. Or you can have one knee up, as long as you're straddling your opponent. In addition, if your opponent is belly down and you don't have your hooks in, and you're straddled, you still have mount. Back mount is worth four points, and the following constitutes back mount. Either both hooks in, body triangle, or you can have one leg in, in a riding position, as long as your hips and shoulders line up with your opponent. Doesn't matter if your opponent is belly up or belly down. Again, we're looking for the one leg, hips and shoulders to be lined up together. Ground scoring points can only be earned once per position per sequence. For instance, blue is gonna be the scoring fighter right now. So three seconds. That's two points for side control. One, two, three. That's three point for mount. One, two, three. That's four for back mount. Now, he cannot go back to any previous positions to score. If he does go back, he's allowed, but he does not score. Now a near submission or an attempted submission is worth two points. The criteria to get these two points is one, it has to be a high percentage submission recognized by the judges. Two, it has to put your opponent in danger of being submitted and or completely shut down all their offensive capabilities, putting them in survival mode. And three, it has to be hold for three seconds of control. One, two, three, four. Two points for blue. Okay, takedowns are worth two points. Takedown is also known as initial ground control. Doesn't matter how you get there, the first fighter who obtains a top controlled and weighted position for three seconds gets the two points. Here's an example of classic takedowns. One, two, three, two for blue. One, two, three, two for red. Now takedowns that land in a ground control position, not only earn the takedown point, it also earns the corresponding ground position point. So, right So right here we have one, two, three seconds of control, which is two points for takedown and two more points for side control. One, two, three. In this case he landed in mount, so we have two points for a takedown and three more for mount. Now in this case, even though the fighter who executed the takedown is on his back, because he has the back mount, he has a control position. So after three seconds of control, he gets two for the takedown and then four more for the back mount. Other instances where the fighter or athlete can get the takedown points are as if red is going to pull guard, 
Blue simply has to land in a top control position for three seconds and he will get the two points. However, if red pulls guard, but plays guard effectively keeping blue from obtaining a top control position, he's denying blue the opportunity to score. At any point, if red sweeps blue and gets a top position for three seconds, he will get the two points. Finally, if a takedown is initiated, but lands in a near submission, he cannot get the takedown points because he doesn't have control. Red, in this case, will get two points for a near submission. At any time blue escapes the submission, he will get the two takedown points. In open mat bouts, bouts where there's no cage or ring, you have a clearly defined boundary, inbounds, out of bounds. If you're one of the athletes exits the mat or goes out of bounds, break, that's one point for red. To score an effective strike, the criteria is it has to land with shock, body displacement, or impact of the opponent. Two, it has to be unobstructed, meaning it can't be partially blocked. And three, it has to be unanswered. So punches to the upper body are worth one point each. Classic upper body punching includes a rear cross, a stiff jab, a hook, an uppercut, and even a hammer fist. Kicks to the upper body are worth two points. Classic kicks to the body include Front kick, round kick, and spinning kick. Kicks to the legs are worth one point. Has to be directed to the inside or outside of the thighs. Inside leg kick, outside leg kick. Certain age groups are permitted to throw a knee to the body. A knee to the body is worth one point. Okay, and there is no scoring for knees to the legs. If there's a clash of strikes and the last striker hits a definitive blow and then exits, we can score that. In this case, red scored one point for the last definitive blow. The same goes for a clash and ending with a kick. In this case, red got two points for an unanswered kick, even though it was part of a clash, because blue was un unable to answer the strike. So for ground strikes, the striker is limited to three effective blows per position. This is to limit the amount of ground and pound, and also most technical transitions on the ground. So to get the ground striking points, first you must be on top, you must be postured upright, and from the guard position, you must be elbow high, and land with good impact. You can get a maximum of three strikes, any types of strikes. If you exceed that, the referee should give the command, advance your position, blue, you've exceeded your strikes. At that point, you should either go to submit, or score more points. In this case, he's gone to side control, which resets the striking scoring clock. So you can throw three more effective blows. Now from side control, you do not need to change positions completely. You can just simply adjust your position, such as going knee on belly. Then you can throw three more strikes. Now to get more, you would have to go to another position, to be maybe mount and he can throw three more strikes. Now if he is inside the guard, it doesn't matter what form of guard, he can throw one strike from full guard, one from half, one from butterfly. It doesn't change the fact that he's in the guard now he cannot throw any more strikes. He must advance his position by getting either mount or side control.